I am speaking now with Mr. Jerry Todd, head of the National Development Division for the Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia. Jerry, hello, how are you? Pleasure to be here, Lucian. Thank you so much. Let's start by talking about next week's private sector forum here in Riyadh. Tell me about it. Uh, so the private sector forum, uh, which is in its second year, um, is an event that allows for private sector companies in the kingdom to engage with the PIF portfolio companies on supplier opportunities. Uh, so PIF has a number of companies that are gonna be investing in growing capacity, uh, building out their businesses in the kingdom. Uh, they need goods and services. Uh, and it's an objective of the PIF that 60% of those goods and services be provided from companies within the kingdom. Uh, and so it's in our interest to make sure that the private sector is aware of these opportunities, that they get access to these opportunities, and also that they understand what they need to do to qualify uh, for these opportunities. And so the private sector forum is an important event in the calendar. It's not the only thing we do, um, but it's one of the ways in which we create awareness, uh, but also engagement. It facilitates and in accelerates engagement between buyer and seller. This year is bigger in almost every way, moving locations. Can you tell me about that? And then as a second part to that question, can you tell me how you will measure success when it's finished? So last year, because it was the first event we'd had, we weren't sure what demand looked like, both from people who wanted to visit, so private sector participants, uh, as well as from the PI portfolio companies. So we held it in a venue that could accommodate about 2,000 people a day uh, over the course of two days. Uh, we had twice that in, in interest from, uh, uh, from potential visitors. Uh, and so we've moved to a location that will allow us to host about 4,000 people a day, so 8,000 in total uh, can attend. Uh, the venue that we did it at last year accommodated about 50 portfolio companies. Each one has a booth that's set up. Uh, they've got procurement people there. Uh, they've got information about their procurement requirements, tendering pipeline, etc. Um, and uh, the private sector, basically, they walk around and they interact directly with these portfolio companies. So we had 50 last year. Uh, we'll have 80 this year, so we have much more room. Um, we also have room for other partners and participants uh, that are working with us to help accomplish this, uh, this uh, local content objective. So there'll be about 15 booths from different government entities uh, that support either through regulation, policy, or providing financing, uh, or investing in infrastructure. Uh, and so the private sector will be able to engage directly with folks from those uh, institutions or those organizations. Um, and because a lot of what's happening in the kingdom is building these, what I call these built environments to enable tourism and uh, entertainment, uh, et cetera. Some of these are quite large and they're a bit difficult for people to get their head around. And so we will have showcases for I think 15 uh, of these large PF portfolio companies. It's, it's a great uh, place to come understand uh, where you can find opportunities. Let me take a step back here. I wanna ask you about the PIF as a whole, and I wanna ask you about the private sector in Saudi Arabia as a whole. Saudi Arabia is investing heavily in its local economy, in the private sector. One way in which they're doing that is creating companies in certain sectors, expecting that development will happen around those companies. I want to ask you about that strategy. Can you tell me a little bit about that and how the PIF intends to create this flourishing and thriving local economy in some of these sectors? This is really the central uh, um, uh, objective of, of what we're doing is to create that thriving private sector uh, within, within the kingdom. When uh, the kingdom discovered oil uh, about 80 or so years ago, the economy had not yet industrialized. Uh, and so you get this chicken and egg problem immediately, which is to build your country, you need products and services. Uh, there's no local supplier base at that point in time, so you start importing. Um, and if you fast forward that over, you know, let's say 50 years, um, you end up in a situation where uh, you're overly reliant on imports for things that actually if you took the time to invest and build local capacity, you could procure locally. Uh, now that's happened successfully in the hydrocarbon ecosystem and in the petrochemicals ecosystem, um, and to some extent in a few others, but we're not yet at the level where we're sufficiently 
um, uh, supplying what we need domestically uh, in order to capture the full opportunity that our spending creates. Uh, and so a big part of Vision 2030 is actually building out those sectors. Now, to create a sector from scratch, uh, relying entirely on the private sector to do that, is challenging because of this chicken and egg issue, right? If you have competitive, high quality imports today uh, and you have no industry domestically today, how do you give the private sector the opportunity to create that, that industry? Uh, well, they won't do it if they don't think they can compete right away because no one builds a factory hoping that in 30 years they start to win business, right? Uh, capitalism doesn't work that way. Right. Um, and this is a, a challenge that governments face globally. And so what governments do is they set policy and they drive investment, their direct investment, either their own or, or, or other people's, um, in order to create the seeds. Uh, and so uh, Vision 2030 and, uh, has mandated PIF to create those seeds. So we're creating catalytic companies uh, in, in a number of new sectors. Uh, those companies are typically at the end of the value chain. So we'll set up an OEM in, let's say, automotive or, or aerospace and defense. Uh, we capitalize them well. We, we are, are clear about the ambition level. Uh, and then their job, with our support, um, is to bring the supply chains into the country. Right. So the real opportunity, the real uh, benefit from diversification um, is that you build domestic supply chains uh, that allow your spending to reverberate through your economy. We're in that phase now. You know, there's a step change in the ambition level. Uh, it's not something the private sector can do on its own. Um, and in some cases, even if they could do it on its own, you're talking about a kind of a multi-decade time frame in which would happen, you know, kind of naturally. And we need to do all those things faster. But every company we've set up is set up as a, it's a private sector company. Uh, they have management teams, board of directors. Um, and at some point, when those businesses have been de-risked to the point where they are investable by, by the private sector, uh, the private sector will come into those businesses. There'll be opportunities for the private sector in, to invest. In the meantime, the supplier opportunity is there today. Right? So these businesses are spending money in the local economy. They have local content policies uh, where they're looking for local suppliers and they have supplier development programs where they can work with suppliers that are maybe not ready to capture the full opportunity, but have some skills and capabilities today that, we, that, that if we work together, we can, we can build on those. So let me ask you a specific example um, of the 80 plus portfolio companies that the PIF has. Let's use the Saudi coffee company as an example. How is the PIF going to use that company, uh, bring it into the market and use it to help crowd in competition and a healthy ecosystem around, in this example, Saudi coffee? So the Saudi coffee company uh, is one of the few where we actually don't have a chicken and egg issue. There's plenty of demand today. You know, Saudi consumes about 75,000 tons of coffee beans today, uh, but we have no supply. We supply about, I think there's about 300 tons of, of uh, Arabica beans uh, that are currently uh, being sourced from um, uh, the, the historical growing area, uh, which is in the mountainous region in the, the southwestern part of uh, the kingdom. Most of that production is actually consumed in those communities. Uh, and so by and large, Saudi coffee as we know it is imported. Um, now, the reason that it's only 300 metric tons is there are challenges around irrigation. Uh, there are challenges around access to working capital. Uh, there are challenges around um, uh, attracting and retaining the workforce to stay on the farms. And so you need to make it economically viable uh, for the producers. Uh, you need to make the industry sustainable. So what have we done? We've created a company to tackle this. Now, the company has a strategy to catalyze demand uh, for Saudi beans uh, globally, um, brand those, help people understand quality, etc. But the hard work is actually on the supply side. And so we're working in those communities. Uh, we've planted 150,000 trees, um, uh, coffee trees that will be uh, uh, on farms uh, owned and operated by local farmers. We're investing in irrigation, uh, which is very important. Uh, we're building a sorting, grading, 
roasting and packaging facilities close to production. For high quality beans, you have a limited amount of time from the time you pick until the time you start processing. And so we need those facilities close by. Um, and of course, uh, we, we want to evangelize uh, the quality of the bean uh, and expand the way in which people think about using it. So we've created a small retail uh, business as well. We'll have five coffee shops, I think, in the kingdom and about 10 outside. Uh, those are for product development, market research, and branding perspectives. Uh, we're not building a big coffee business, uh, but we have a few flagships uh, which allow us to test, learn, innovate, but also educate and communicate uh, about this uh, really wonderful uh, asset we have, which has historically uh, not been well understood. So in that way, it really is inviting competition, other companies in, because you're sort of building out the ecosystem and then making it easier for them to produce, which in turn helps Saudi Arabia. You know a lot about coffee. I'm kind of, it's kind of amazing. <laughs> uh, we work a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, look, something similar has been happening in dates over the past 20 years. Uh, you know, if you went back to the 1980s, dates were sold by weight in burlap bags on the side of the road. Um, and as companies came in and started investing in, in educating, but also investing in quality, uh, you've seen a differentiation uh, in, um, in that market. So they're very high-end you know, uh, dates you can buy that are packaged very well, uh, high-quality grading, et cetera. There's an opportunity for us to do that with the Arabica bean, with the Saudi Arabica bean. Uh, and so uh, you know, this is a, uh, if you think about it, um, the value of those beans going up benefits everyone in the ecosystem. Uh, in the sense that so the farmers benefit, uh, demand side will pay more for higher quality. That's been proven uh, uh, globally. Uh, it creates an export opportunity we don't have today. We essentially don't export today. Uh, something for which there's already high demand, but we have to create the supply and we have to communicate. I want to ask you about Musahama. You launched that last year. What is Musahama? Am I saying it right? And tell me about the progress so far. So you, you're saying it right. Okay. Uh, so Musahama means loosely uh, contribution, uh, and it is the PIF's local content program. So we as PIF have a, uh, an objective to meet 60% uh, local content across our portfolio versus you know, the 46% uh, or so where we are today. Um, and Musahama is the vehicle through which we work with our portfolio companies. Uh, to get there. Every portfolio company has to have a policy and targets and hold their management accountable to, to deliver on those. Uh, they have to have a program, a strategy and a program uh, through which they work to engage uh, the, the local private sector um, and, and favor uh, local, um, uh, locally supplied products where it's appropriate. Um, and they have to set up what we call a supplier development program uh, where they build the supplier base over time to, to do increasingly complex and large, uh, um, to capture increasingly uh, complex and, and, and sizable um, supplier opportunities. So Musahama is how we kind of roll this out and implement it across uh, uh, the portfolio. Uh, it is one way we address chicken and egg issues, right? So if something is not supplied locally and you want to procure it locally, um, but you also have deadlines uh, to meet in your business, uh, then you just import. Um, and this importing uh, is uh, everything we import uh, is an opportunity for a local company, uh, but they need support. You need to solve the chicken and egg issues. And so Musahama really is an attempt to address that. Uh, the, it's a tried and, 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 and proven model. Uh, Aramco has a very successful program called ICTIVA, uh, which does the same thing SABIC does as well, STC does, SEC, um, um, uh, MADN. Um, and in fact, some people from some of these companies will be at the private sector forum uh, talking a bit about this, uh, this subject. So Jerry, key to all of this, key to localization, key to developing a thriving local economy is talent and talent retention and talent development. I know it's something that's very important to you personally and to the PIF as a whole, what is the PIF doing to develop local talent and to attract talent to the kingdom? Well, again, it's one of these chicken and egg issues. I feel like I'm overusing that. Uh, but um, if you need a workforce in a sector you don't have today, that workforce 
probably isn't here today. Uh, and so in the sectors that we're building out, some of which are quite technical, like you know, advanced manufacturing, uh, some of which are quite cultural, like service industries where you, you know, have to create a culture around service, et cetera. Um, uh, we're setting up a number of initiatives uh, to address those. Some of those are being done at the company level, uh, but some are bigger and there's an opportunity to do it more at the national level. So we will be announcing at least one of those, I think, uh, at the private sector forum, uh, but there are others uh, in the works. Uh, but it's part of a broader question, which is how do you make sure in a sector that's new, you have the right ecosystem in place to activate that sector? So we don't just look at talent, although that's a, although that's a critical component. We also look at policy and regulation. Is that supportive? Uh, now, as PIF, we don't write policy. We're essentially an investment firm. Um, but when we find a mismatch, we engage with stakeholders in government to try to uh, address it. Um, there's also, in some cases, need for infrastructure, logistics, etc., to support some of these new uh, industries. I'll give you a simple example. If you're creating tourism resorts on the Red Sea, you need to allow for people to get there uh, and back in a, you know, in, a, in a comfortable way. So there's a variety of tourism and logistical infrastructure investments happening across the ecosystem to support the different uh, industries. Um, and then most importantly, and really, as I mentioned before, the fundamental goal of a lot of what we do is to build local supply chains. Uh, and so you need uh, potential suppliers to be aware of the opportunity. Uh, you need to facilitate their entry into the market. Um, you need to make sure that the enablers that they require, talent, policy, in infrastructure, et cetera, are there for them as well. Uh, and so this is, you know, when we're, when we're meeting five years from now, a lot of the discussion we're gonna have is actually about the progress we've made in building local supply chains. Mr. Jerry Todd, head of the National Development Division at the Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia, Jerry. Thank you so much. Pleasure.